worked what huh it's running on its own it certainly looks like it uh isn't that kind of weird what well it's not connected to the main computer right there's just this keyboard and monitor the only cable connected to this thing is the power cable we just plugged in so why is it working? Maybe it's a wireless display. Uh, a wireless display? Yes, it connects to your computer wirelessly, hence the name. Have you been living in a cave, Junpei? Is that normal? Yes, at least where I worked. Oh. Oh, it stopped. Pass with a colon. Looks like we need to enter a password. Again? Uh, there must be a hint around here somewhere. Could you go take a look? Yeah, I'm on it. What are you going to do? I'll see if I can do something about this on my own. On your own? Yep, on my own. Lotus? All right. Let's kick some ass. Uh... Wait, what? Didn't expect that, did you? Of course I didn't! You're typing so fast, I, I can't even see your fingers. What kind of job do you have? What are you? I'm unemployed at the moment. I used to work for a cybersecurity firm, but I quit. Why? Huh? Oh, um, it was just something. I see. Hmm. Oh, uh, what are you doing now? I'm going to try and brute force it. Brute what? A brute force attack is... Well, the short version is that I just attack the thing head-on. The long version? A brute force attack is one of the simplest ways to break a cipher. It checks every possible combination until it finds the right one. For a complex cipher, it can take a very long time. I'm writing a program that would run an attack like that on its own. It's not the most elegant solution, certainly. But given the circumstances, there isn't much else I can do. Oh, but back to what we were talking about earlier. What were we talking about? The wireless display? It's kind of strange if you think about it, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> How do I put it? Well, let's say you write a program that calculates an addition problem for you, all right? So you enter one plus one. The screen will show you two. See? Isn't that strange? Uh, no. Not really. Oh, come on now. Of course a caveman like you would think it was strange. You said so just a minute ago. Hmm? <laughs> You're just not getting it, are you? Who calculated one plus one? The, uh, the, the main computer, right? You said it connected to the monitor wirelessly. Yeah, but someone who grew up in a cave wouldn't know that, right? They'd probably think that this thing here, the monitor, is doing the calculating. And once they've decided that, they'll start examining this monitor. They might poke the screen or something. Ah, I see the color changes when I press it here. Then they might investigate the hardware on the inside. Oh, I see. So this wire supplies the power. Eventually, they might even cut the wires. Ah, yes. Just as I expected. When this wire is cut, no results appear. Therefore, it must be this device which does the calculations. Oh. But the truth is that, just like you said, the computer is doing the calculating. But these cave people wouldn't know that because they have no idea that the monitor and the computer are connected wirelessly. So, uh, what are you trying to say? Nothing, really. It's just, I thought, maybe. What if the relationship between human beings and our brains is like that? Huh? Well, let's say you stick a bunch of electrodes into parts of the brain. 
A scientist examining the signals they send out might say, hmm, interesting. So stimulating this part of the brain causes the person to see colors. That must mean this neuron cluster controls that function. Okay, let's see what happens when I cut out this part. Ah, just what I thought. Cutting off this part causes that function to cease. Therefore, human thought processes must occur in the human brain. See, doesn't it sound the same? Hmm, uh... Maybe the brain is just an output device, like this monitor. Maybe our thought processes actually occur somewhere else, in a main body. We just don't know it. Never even think about it. Just like those cave people wouldn't know about wireless communications. We can't imagine that there's some unknown medium that transfers information into our brains, where we experience that information as thoughts. Um... The brain is just an output device. Human thought actually occurs somewhere else. <laughs> that's just crazy talk. Maybe that's the cause of Seven's amnesia. If memory is actually stored somewhere else, in some sort of main body somewhere, maybe he hasn't forgotten anything at all. He's just having a difficult time accessing his memories because the monitor, his brain, has been damaged. Huh. I suppose that would explain aphasia and blindsight, too. Perhaps they actually can speak or see. The monitor just isn't functioning properly. Hmm. I guess people with prosopagnosia could be suffering from the same thing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Prosopag... what? What? You've never heard of prosopagnosia? No. What is it? Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Usually they can make do by associating people with other things. Their voices, their clothes, their hair. Does that mean other people's faces look like... blanks? No. No, I don't think so. Well, you've seen monkeys, like in a zoo, right? To you and me, all the monkey faces look the same. Even though they've obviously got faces, it's almost impossible for a human to distinguish between them. The zoo staff that works with them would learn to identify different monkeys eventually. But you or I couldn't, unless one had a scar or something else to set it apart. Well, that's how people would be to someone with prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia? Huh. I didn't even know that kind of thing existed. And, um, uh, what were we talking about? The idea that your brain is just an output device, like a monitor. Are you serious about that stuff? Not really. I was just kidding for about half of it. What about the other half? Well, I guess I was just adulting. Mm hmm? Hmm. <sighs> Not funny. <laughs> it's nothing more than a story I made up out of boredom. Don't take it seriously. It was the first thing that came to mind, and I just talked about it to kill time. But, looks like I don't need to talk anymore. Why? I don't have to kill time any longer. Oh, then you finished that brute whatever thing? I certainly did. And let's see what we got. <laughs> Piece of cake. The screen changed again. What the hell is that? No idea. Looks like a puzzle. Huh? Uh, aren't you gonna, I don't know, do more computer stuff? No, I can't do any more. It won't let me do any more programming. See? The keyboard. Nothing. So, there's nothing more I can do. Um... Well, I guess I'll leave this to you then, Junpei. What? Let me take a break, all right? I did my part. Yeah, uh, well, I guess you're right. Thanks, Lotus. No problem. And make sure you know when you should thank people. Now, I better take care of this myself. No more relying on anyone else. <laughs>